Hi, so this is the next uh, in the series. I think it's part three now on sexuality and specifically looking at pornography. And we've heard in the past series how pornography, especially is a scheme of the devil to destroy marriages, to destroy Christian life. It destroys health. And it's uh, we need to be taking our stand against the scheme of the devil because the devil's a liar. We know that. And he just comes to rock kill, and destroy. Jesus came that we should have life. And that's what Jesus wants for you and for me, to have joyful, abundant, full life. That's why he went to the cross, because he so loved the Lord, so loved you, so we were worth the price. So my brothers and sisters, let's get set free. If you have a pornography problem, if you have a secret sexuality problem, bring it into the light. As John, 1 John chapter 1 says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have True fellowship with one another. Don't retreat into a place of condemnation, guilt, and shame. Okay, we've all done things wrong that we're ashamed of. And sometimes sexuality is very hard to talk or talk about. And we know that it opens a door to the demonic. So I want to talk a little bit just briefly today. It's always briefly, but <laughs> always run out of time. About freedom. You know, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And the, and, and, and the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the works of the devil. And this perverse sexuality is a work of the devil. Remember, sex within marriage is beautiful, righteous, and should be enjoyed to the full. And if you don't have a good sex life, it's one of the best things you can do for your marriage is sort that out. Get some help. Okay, because marriages with good sex lives tend to endure. Okay, um, it might be a little bit awkward to talk about things to people, but you know what? We're not called to walk in shame. It's a God-given gift. And it says, the, 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 in, the, in the scripture says, do not deprive each other. In other words, do not, husbands, don't deprive your, your wife of a good sex life. Wives, don't deprive your husbands because your body doesn't belong to you. It belongs to him. Husbands, your body belongs to your wife. See, God gave it as a beautiful gift. That's why it's fun. That's why it's exhilarating. You know, enjoy. There's nothing wrong with that. But today I want to say if you are addicted to pornography or, or secret um, sexual lives, perversion, bisexuality, homosexuality, and you're a married man or vice versa or lesbianism, you know, there's all a lot of stuff going on. And often it's linked in with the occult. As I said, there's a direct link between sexual immorality and the occult. So things, by the way, things you know, I'm not talking just against one type of sex. Sex outside of marriage, whether it's heterosexual, homosexual, bisexual, bestiality, you know, all those perversions, pedophilia, they are perverse, they are sin, and they should not have a part of our lives, okay? Sex love making is for love making. It's for binding yourself to your wife or to your husband, not to anyone else. So if you're struggling, the good news is that Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and addictions and pornography can be an addiction. And often we we turn to pornography to find comfort and men, especially because they stimulated through the eyes. Ladies are more stimulated by emotional things. And that's just the way we made up. That's the difference. And by the way, there's only two sexes, male and female. There's no multiple sexes. That is just a lie of the devil. And actually, we all know it. And, and, and people who say otherwise have entered into a perverse spirit. And that's, again, not to... If you're struggling with sexual identity, the good news is you can be free. I'm talking from experience. I've seen it over the years. But there's two sexes, male and female. And if you're struggling with anything other than that, it's founded on a lie. And, and sadly, there are um, cultures out there that are promoting this kind of confusion into young people's lives. We need to be very careful of that. So freedom comes when we call on the name of Jesus. So point number one, your freedom from addiction, freedom from pornography, freedom from the demonic powers of pornography, because when you watch porn, there's demons imparted. Or when you unite yourself with a prostitute, male or female, there's demons imparted. The first step to freedom is to call on the name of Jesus Christ. So if you've never given your life to Jesus, you need to do that today. As I said in one of the last videos, get down on your knees, turn away from your sin, 
Confess your sin, that you're a sinner, that you need a different life, that you're prepared to turn away and give your life to Jesus, die to self, and ask Jesus into your life. He will come into your life by the Holy Spirit and you will be born again. You will become a new creature. The old will go and the new will come. You will be a new creation, a new spirit, spiritual, physical being. And the freedom process will start and you'll have to work it out. Okay, as I had to. I had, I had quite a lot of deliverance, quite a lot of healing and stuff. It took me a while to get rid of some of the occultic stuff I'd been involved in. And I've seen many, uh, in fact, we prayed with a young man this morning. Um, just now for us, there was a whole bunch of stuff, spirit of lust and uh, a whole bunch of stuff. But actually, when we prayed for him, it was founded in rejection. And as I was just sharing with him on the, the Lord has shown me that he had a spirit of rejection. He just broke down and started sobbing. And the next thing, these demons started like coming out, like just screaming, like Wah! screaming and eyes were rolling around. And sure, it was hectic, but it started by recognizing that he didn't know who he was in Christ. It started with 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 rejection and he started on calling on the name of Jesus. So it says, all who call on the name of Jesus shall be saved. Again, that word saved is sozo. All who call on the name of Jesus shall be made whole. Whole in every way, body, soul, and spirit. We're body, soul, and spirit. Delivered from evil. And you know, if you're struggling with sexual lust and sexual, sexual sin and sexual visitations by, by demons in the night, the good news is you can be set free. Starts by calling on the name of the Lord, giving your life to Jesus Christ. Call out to Jesus. Keep calling out to Jesus until you are delivered. So the first step is to call on the name of Jesus. Is to, to, is to what? Actually, the first step is to recognize your sin. Sorry. It's to recognize I'm a sinner. I am participating in, in sinful activities. That's the first step. And then to repent. Repent means to totally turn around from that sin, to say, I don't want it anymore. I recognize it's sinful. Then we call on the name of the Lord Jesus. It says Jesus became sin that we should become righteous, have right standing with God. So the first step is recognize your sin, confess it, reckon, like speak it out, you know, get, do that with someone else, turn away from it, and then call on the name of Jesus. And recognize, Jesus, I believe you died for me on the cross. I believe you bore these sins on the cross. See, this is, this is the steps to freedom. And when you, when you are born again, you, you invite Jesus into your life, the Holy Spirit comes. And by the way, that's important. It's not just praying a prayer, it's, but it is praying, come Holy Spirit, allowing the Holy Spirit to touch you and fill you. It says you become a temple of the Holy Spirit. Actually, are born again. It means you are... Born as a spiritual, physical creature. <clears throat> then we start to walk in the light. So as I said, John, 1 John chapter 1, it says, walk in the light. See, it says you are the light of the world. Jesus is the light. He exposes darkness. Get away from that secret lifestyle. So if you have secret lovers, if you have secret likes on pornography, if you have secret lifestyles, prostitution, walk in the light. How do you walk in the light? First of all, you confess it to God. You cry out to God. As I said, cry out to Jesus. Jesus, I need help. Help! That's a good prayer. <laughs> and then get into an accountable relationship with other Christians. Men with men and women with women, especially with sexual stuff. You know, don't get me wrong. I don't want to be legalistic, but it's helpful because stuff gets stirred up when you're talking. And share that. Walk in the light. Say, I am bound by this. This is what I'm doing. I have a secret sex life with prostitutes. Or I'm watching porn. Bring it into the light. There's no shame. It's not about shame. And by the way, if you're in that kind of group, what people tell you is totally confidential. What you say to people needs to be understood as being confidential. The most harmful things in the church, people sharing other people's secrets. So get into accountable relationship. We need fellowship. Do not give up with the gathering of the, of, of the believers. So even in this Zoom stuff, we say, oh, we just do everything on Zoom. Guys, get into a church. Church is fellowship, by the way. The word church means a gathering together of the holy ones of God. That's what Ecclesia, the church is. 
not about some institution, but we need to be in a family type relationship with other men and women who love Jesus. And when we are battling with sin, we need to confess our sins to one another that we can be free and healed, as it says in James 5. We don't have to confess our sins to God. He already knows our sins. Well, there's nothing wrong with that if you want to do it, but that's not a condition. It's a freedom. But it is helpful to bring things into the light by talking to others about it and getting them to pray for you. So once we've given our, when we've recognized our sin, we've given, we've called, our, called on the name of Jesus and given our lives to Jesus, then the Holy Spirit comes and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom and there is liberty because Jesus, where the Spirit is, as it says in Isaiah 61, where the Spirit of the Lord is, okay, where the anointing of God is, there's freedom for those who are captive to addictions, Okay, and, and there's freedom for the prisoners. If you're imprisoned by these secret things, these shameful things, Jesus came to bring freedom. You know, Titus 2.12 says, For it is the grace of God that enables you to say no to the lusts of the world. <clears throat> See, most people think if you lay down a, a whole load of rules, laws, and regulations, that's going to help you to say no to sin. That's not what the Scriptures teach. The Scriptures teach that legalism, laws, rules, and regulations exposes sin, but actually even increases sin. But then it says where sin increases, grace will increase even more. It is grace that sets us off up from sin, sets us free from sin. It is the law that exposes sin. So the purpose of the law is to expose sin, so you know, hey, it says in the law, do not commit adultery. Ha, huh, broken the law, I need grace to overcome. That's, that is the step. It's not law that sets us free from sin. It's grace. God's goodness. God's love. The atoning work of Jesus Christ on the cross who became sin that we should become the righteousness of God. Love it. So we need to enter into our understanding of grace. I find people who have grown up in legalistic religion are often immoral. And we see that in the church all the time, by the way. People are like, oh, what's wrong with these people? With these guys, men of God, going off with their secretaries and, you know, having affairs. Often it's because they've entered into immorality, sorry, into legalism. Or they have not recognized the scheme of the devil with it, who, who often comes at men with sexual temptation. Those, those are two of the things. And, as, and men and women of God, we need to recognize, okay, that legalism stirs up sin and often leads to sexual immorality. And temptation is often of a sexual nature. We need to resist that. And again, I think I shared with you before, if I feel sexually tempted by um, some woman or even some man, geez, I can't even say that, not that that happens, but <laughs> you can these days, hey, because there's sexual spirits, you'll feel. But often, I don't know if you've met people and you just feel flip, this person, this guy is so sexual, or this woman's so sexual, it's actually... Like, it's actually not that person, it's a demon in them. Sexual seducing spirit. Seducing spirits are very common. I go and I confess that to my wife and it kills it dead. So we need to be in accountable relationships with your wife or a prayer partner if you're not married, where we can bring this stuff into the light. We need to be in grace. We need to understand we are saved by grace, not by law. If you are living out religious religiosity, you're in trouble. So get into grace, understand grace. We are saved by grace, we are maintained by grace, and we receive eternal life through grace. It's all God's free gift. If you think you can do it by yourself, good luck. You can try. You ain't going to make it. You won't make it, I promise you. If God, and let me tell you my life, if God lets go of me, I'm lost. I don't depend on my effort. I, I do want to please God. I do want to live righteously. But let me tell you something, there's times in my life where I can't do it. And I don't lose my salvation when that happens because God is faithful to me. So get into, give your life to Jesus, recognize your sin, give your life to Jesus, call on the name of Jesus, walk in the light, be in accountable relationships, found yourself in grace, get rid of legalism, understand your identity as a child of God. Yes, 
we are called to serve God. But we are not servants nor slaves. We are children of God who are slaves to righteousness, who serve our Father, but our identity is children of God. John chapter 1, to all who believe in Jesus have the right to become children of God. Listen to my teachings on identity. Very important to understand our identity because when you understand you're a child of God, it will help you resist the temptation of finding your identity in addictions such as drugs or pornography. Because people are looking for a sense of belonging. And the crazy thing is people go to porn sites to feel that they belong. How weird is that? But that's what happens. That's our desperation to feel as if we belong to something. It's why we need to be in fellowship. We need to have that sense of belonging. We as the church need to welcome people. We are family. People need to have a sense of identity in us as a brothers and sisters in Christ with one father who is God. Okay. We also need to have a sense of calling on our life. If you well, often when people are doing pornography or things, they have, they, they have a purpose less life. They are bored. They don't know what to do with themselves. They're looking for thrills. And, and it's almost like a thrilling thing to do porn and hope you're not caught by your wife. And that gives me a kick. Guys, that's because you don't know your calling. You're created in God's image. There's a call on you every person's life. Let me just say, whoever you are out there, there is no one who's ever been created like you. You are unique Created in God's image and there is a purpose in your life. Listen to my uh, little um, video clip on God as a purpose. We need to get and understand our identity. We need to understand our calling, that our lives are there. And the reason our lives are there is to glorify God, to live eternally to glorify God. But also at this time, in the use, you see, we live in a unique time. After, after eternal life comes, we're not going to have this time now. The time we live in is the time to destroy the works of the devil. See, the devil and his dominions are going to pass away. In, 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 in heaven, we're not going to have this. But now we are called to destroy the works of the devil and the evil, and the evil works. Pornography, immorality, transgenderism and all this. It's all works of the devil, lies of the devil. And that's not to condemn anybody. Let me say it. Whoever you are out there, whatever you're struggling with, I love you. I am not saying this to hurt you or condemn you. I'm saying it because I was someone that was bound up in this stuff. And I came into the glorious freedom of Jesus Christ. And I want the same for you because I love you. God loves you even more. And that's even better news. <laughs> I don't know you. He knows you. But what I do know, you created in the image of God. And because of that, I love you. And I'm, that's why I'm sharing this stuff. I'm speaking bluntly because sometimes truth needs to be spoken quite directly in love. I'm not saying it because I set myself up above everyone else. I'm not. I know that I'm capable of the most debased acts unless God keeps hold of me. Without God, I want to tell you, I will descend into every type of immorality available. I know that it's only the grace of God that keeps me out of those things. And the good news is he wants to help you to come out of them and stay out of them. Guys and girls do not believe that you are slaves to sin. If you are born again and saved, truly born again and saved, you are righteous and you are a slave to righteous. You cannot help but do right. Let me say, if you are struggling with an ongoing life, sinful lifestyle and you can't help yourself, doesn't matter if you call yourself a Christian. I don't believe you're saved. I don't believe you've truly given your life to Jesus. Because if you have, it says you will not continue in sin. You know, you will sin from now and again, but you will not willingly embrace because the conviction of the Holy Spirit will be there. He, he, he'll be, be driving you to get help. So there's two questions. Either you're ignoring the voice of God or you actually don't have the voice of God within you and you're not saved. If that's the case, get saved. Because you go to church doesn't mean you're saved. Many of the epistles were written to Christians, called themselves Christians, but actually had never died to themselves and been born again. And that may apply to you if you're bound in an addictive, sinful lifestyle and can't get out of it. If you are saved, you can be liberated because the blood of Jesus is liberating. And the one who liberates us 
by dying on the cross lives in you if you're a born again Christian. So there is hope. I want to encourage you to work through those things. Okay, just to summarize, recognize your sin. Call on the name of Jesus and you will be saved. Give your life to Jesus. Confess your sins and repent of them. In other words, bring them into the light. Have an accountable relationship with other Christians, spirit-filled Christians. Get established in grace. Your identity is a child of God. Understand your calling. And finally, if you're struggling with lustful spirits, get deliverance. Okay, Let me, there's a direct link between demons and sexual immorality. And one of the things we found help with people, help with people often, they come, they get prayer. Man, oh man, people who are actually sin in the church. Don't ask me how it works. What I do know is they've been dabbling in stuff they shouldn't be dabbling in. And there's a demonic oppression. They cannot be possessed, they belong to Jesus. But there can be an oppression and a robbing. And that happens through demons. Get some deliverance. Get together with a few people. You can call me anywhere in the world. We have teams that pray with people. We pray for people over Zoom. Or we can link you in with a local church. Um, deliverance from demonic spirits is important. They are real. Don't be kidded into, kidded into thinking that demons aren't real. They're real. One third of Jesus' ministry was the casting out of demons and the healing that went with it. Guys, this is good news. God loves you. God wants to see you free. I love you too. And if I can help you in any way, please let me know.